question here is, um, I guess, kind of about the, the visual impact you have on this guy. You seem to sort of uh, don 60s type hippie, uh, hippie clothing. Uh, well, we like to consider them colorful clothes. Okay. <laughs> You Not don't. necessarily hippie clothes. Okay, then you don rather colorful clothing. Uh, what exactly do you have in mind by that? Is that how you know how you guys have always dressed, or is that just a, a concept mm -hmm. of fitting with the band? Or uh... well, we like to dress colorfully. I mean, whether we're on stage or or not, it was just another element to, uh, the, of the band's music. We just, did, you know, the band the band's music is is. Um, well, I hate to say it's colorful, but I mean, it's like, it's it's not it's not like dark <coughs> dirge music or something. We wanted we just wanted it to be an extension of the music, uh -huh. the look of the band. You, 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 so it's not necessarily directly influenced by '60s stuff, then? No, no, not at all. I mean, it, we just like to dress colorfully, and it just so happens that a lot of the fashions in the '60s were colorful, so a lot of people make that that immediate association. Yeah. And you know, it's just kind of, it's unfortunate. We just wanted, we just wanted to, uh, you know, be visually exciting. I mean, you'll, you'll never see us wearing paisley and, and, and tie-dye and stuff like that. Uh-huh. We well, just... Yeah, if you don't wear paisley and tie-dye, you're definitely not 60s. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, there's, there's sort of a, a note here on the, the music as well. Um, this guy is uh, re reminded of, uh, you know, stuff like the Beatles and Beach Boys and, he even has down bad finger here and uh, the monkeys also um so that that's why he he uh, made the, uh, the hippie the hippie connection there right clothing. yeah i mean i i those are great influences i i would be lying if i said we weren't influenced by those bands but there's there's like so much more and and not just elements of the 60s and the 70s but you know there's all kinds of elements that transcend all those, hmm. those things. how old are you guys I'm 20, Andy's 25, that's me, and then Raj. I'm 24. Uh-huh. And where did you guys grow up? Where? Yeah. Uh, it's in the East Bay, uh, east of San Francisco, a little Spielberg-type suburb. What, 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 what's the name of it? Oh, well, it's called Pleasanton, believe it or not. Uh-huh. But it's just, it's, <laughs> it's like the typical suburb you see in uh, all of Steven Spielberg's movies. Oh, I see. Whether it's E.T. or Poltergeist or... Uh-huh. So, like, when you guys were growing up, what, what what sort of stuff were you listening to? Everything. <laughs> we got pretty uh, into experimenting, you know, with different styles and trying to uh, expand our musical horizons. And, I mean, actually, when we were <coughs> pre, <coughs> excuse me, pre junior high and stuff like that, we were just listening to whatever happened to be on this radio station called KFRC, which was this this. AM radio station that was just very popular and the great thing about it was that AM radio at that time in the, in the States would play anything I mean next to uh, you, would, you would hear Led Zeppelin next to Neil Sedaka and um, so it really it kind of like laid the groundwork for a pretty diverse musical sensibility and um, after after that period I think Roger and I both got really heavily into jazz just because we were very into being musicians and being very good as musicians that that was like a natural step for us hmm. so okay. in high school we were just jazz snobs is that right yeah uh, by the way eddie between you and me that's the big 610 okay oh oh my <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm from san francisco i listen i'm from actually marine county i listened to that stuff back in the 60s wow there so you, you know yeah, yeah i don't know well, about that's enough said. We can we can end this interview right now. He, <laughs> he understands the band. <laughs> Six ten. So, so wait a minute. You guys uh, you guys started listening to jazz in, in high school then, huh? Well, I was listening to jazz the entire time. Um, um, but it, yeah, in high school, it was just it got to be the snob thing, where you know that was the only music that really mattered. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, we've outgrown that silly phase. Mm -hmm. um, and. I don't know. I, we, I can appreciate anything at this point, cool. but uh, yeah, it was just a period of of, of just kind of after it, speaking for myself. I mean, after the jazz thing, and when I realized I could never write Bill Evans chords <laughs> and and write my funny Valentine, that um, <laughs> that I, I was just kind of opening myself up to all kinds of different musics. I mean, like everything from John Cage and Laurie Anderson and that kind of thing to just whatever was burgeoning new wave or whatever and and you know and then 
it took me a while to to discover the classics like you know the Beatles and the Beach Boys and Badfinger and those bands that you spoke of before. Mm-hmm. But I mean that was a fairly recent thing. Yeah, I mean I, I'd go over to Andy's house, you know, and hang out, and it was always like this exciting thing because uh, he'd go to use record stores and come back with all these records for me to listen to. I was like one work, you know, one week he was. Uh, you know, letting me discover the birds, and the next week we were listening to, I God, I don't know what. I mean, yeah. on the totally other end of the spectrum. Hmm. Hmm. So w- w- when did things like start to change for you guys? W- w- when was the turning point that you knew you were gonna, uh, you know, become uh, pros? Well, I mean, we kind of always knew we wanted to do do this. Uh, we always wanted to be in a, uh, you know, a pop band of some kind, performing our own original music and then when we started like uh writing together it was just kind of this unspoken thing i mean we stylistically we um were writing you know stuff that works together it was just very natural uh we just like shared so many of the same ideas yeah i mean we had listened to so many different and grew up on so many of the different uh ele- i mean so many of the same elements that now when roger and i write together it's like this unspoken thing that we have i mean if i'm having trouble with the song you know roger and roger knows exactly where it's supposed to go he knows he's not going to come up with something that is totally diverse to what i'm going for mm. and that just comes from listening to all the same records mm. Mm. So in the liner notes uh, which i guess you guys wrote on your own uh you respect the guys like uh, henry mancini and also even wrote down pete ham yeah um, you said something about, uh, you know, res- uh, respecting the un- unsung heroes. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, there's people like Emmett Rhodes and, and a lot of other prolific songwriters, you know. Yeah, I mean, Nick, Nick Drake and yeah. Emmett Rhodes and people like that. But even, you know, Tom Waits and Randy Newman and Van Dyke Parks. Um, there's a lot of people that, that don't get the, the, the do that they should. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's just there's just so many great people to listen to that that nobody even knows about. Hmm. Um, we, we we try to discover those people and, hmm. and 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 just ingest them. Well, you you used to, you used to come back with uh, records, then Andy. Uh, you, where, where were you picking these records up, and how did you go about choosing them? Well, there's a little store called Portable Madness <laughs> in Pleasanton. It was a it was a, a local head shop. Yeah, it was a used record store head shop. <laughs> and um, it was it was amazing to me that you could actually I could take my dad's records and go sell them and buy records of my own. <laughs> <laughs> so to this day, I don't think my dad will read this Japanese interview. But to this day, my dad, when everybody left the house, he he never realized. He, he said, "You know, God, I used I used to have a ton of records. I don't know what happened to all of them." Little did he know, I transferred him into UK records or whatever I happened to be buying that week. You know. What were they like? Were they like, were they seventy eights or uh, just like? Um, no, they were just you know <laughs> a lot of jazz records and big band records mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, but I mean, I was pretty fortunate that my my dad had you know very diverse tastes as well. I mean, he had Henry Mancini records and he had Grand Funk records, mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was pretty interesting. And Santana, he was into a lot. Uh-huh. Of course, every parent is into Herb Albert and Tijuana Brass. But. <laughs> Brazil 66. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, definitely. Um, do you guys want to be thought of as like being on the fringe of, of pop music, or do you think there's a place for Jellyfish you know, in, in the middle of the mainstream? Hmm. Good question. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know that it matters. I mean, I just want like people to sing along. Basically. Yeah, I mean, if if being on the fringe means, I mean, I see. I don't necessarily believe that being on the fringe means you, you know, you're you're true to your art. I mean, and and all that that alternative crap that college radio has sold the public. I think in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. um, I, you know, you know, you could you could love a, uh, an artist for years and love his records, and and if you you know you buy his current record and say, God forbid, it becomes a huge smash. People say, you know, it'd be the same record that he was you were raving about six months ago, and then you say, oh, he sold out, you know. Mm-hmm. And really, he's doing, you know, people like Elvis Costello deserve to have hit records, mm-hmm. you know. And and his last record was great, and he had he had a hit, you know, and, and that's fantastic. People like, you know, he deserves it. And, and anyway, so well, I guess what I'm trying to say.